This call is now being recorded. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. So we have uh, finished all the experiments uh, in part B. We had uh, four experiments, uh, simulation of uh, NRZ and RZ line codes, uh, pulse code modulation, QPSK, transmission and reception, and uh, non-coherent DPSK. I hope uh, all of you have uh, worked on these experiments in your uh, laptops or computers and you have uploaded uh, your screenshots uh, to the Google Drive that we have uh, shared, Google Drive link. If somebody is yet to do it, please do it. We will be looking at your uh, screenshots and we will allocate marks. If somebody is yet to do it, still time is there, do it immediately. Later on, don't ask us that why we have given zero for part B. By tomorrow morning, all of you should have uploaded all of your screenshots of all the four experiments. Create a folder by your USN name and upload all the documents by tomorrow morning. If somebody does not upload, then we will be forced to give zero for uh, such candidates. Okay. So, if you have any doubts, you can uh, ask me with respect to part B experiments. Uh, if not, uh, let me proceed with part A. Somebody has uh, any doubts in part B experiments? Any doubts? I've uh, uploaded all the recorded sessions, videos to my YouTube channel. If you have doubts in any of the experiments, experiments, you can uh, uh, look those videos and uh, sort out your doubts. If it is not sorted out, you can contact me. I'll be happy to help you out. Okay. Now in part A, we have hardware experiments and in uh, hardware uh, experiments section, we have totally eight experiments uh, ranging from uh, time division multiplexing and uh, demultiplexing, ASK, FSK, PSK, then microwave test bench, antennas and uh, ring resonator, microstrip, couplers, power dividers and uh, optical fiber. So again, we can divide this uh, these hardware experiments into two sections. The first four can be considered as uh, communication cycle and remaining uh, four can be considered as microwave cycle. Okay, so first four experiments will be communication cycle and remaining uh, four will be microwave cycle because they are related to microwave uh, frequencies. In the first four uh, experiments, which is categorized as communication experiments, we'll be discussing about time division multiplexing, and demultiplexing, ASK, FSK, and PSK. Now today, I'll be beginning with ASK, then we will go to FSK, PSK, and then we will come to uh, TDM, okay? Because each and every uh, modulation scheme is interrelated. So we will finish off all the three modulation schemes, and then we will uh, take up time division multiplexing okay so as you probably uh, would have studied in uh, previous semester digital communication uh, techniques there are three uh, main digital communication techniques amplitude shift keying uh, frequency shift keying and phase shift keying they are analogous to amplitude modulation frequency modulation and phase modulation what you have studied in uh, pcs principles of communication systems and these are the waveforms of uh, FSK, PSK and ASK. So our focus is on ASK today, the third waveform. Okay. In ASK, what we are uh, going to do is we will represent logic one by sending the carrier signal. You can see in this uh, diagram, logic one is represented by sending carrier signal and logic zero is represented by sending a flat line. Okay, so no signal for zero and for one signal will be present. What are the advantages? Bandwidth efficiency and it is simple to implement, but loss of power because we are sending a flat line during logic zero that leads to loss of power and it is susceptible to noise and multipath propagation and uh, absence of signal uh, uh, at binary zero may lead to some sort of noise occurrence, particularly during logic zero level. Okay. 
so that's about ask uh, we shall discuss fsk and psk uh, in the subsequent classes okay so as of now uh, this is uh, enough so let me go to the uh, hardware uh, implementation part so this is the amplitude shift keying this is, we will be sharing uh, this manual with you guys so the aim is to aim is to design a circuit for detection and generation of amplitude shift keying as i've already told you this is hardware uh, these are hardware set of experiments so you will need components hopefully you will come to college in uh, in the month of november and you can implement this nevertheless today we will uh, uh, give the explanation regarding this experiment and we will also try to simulate this using an online circuit simulator uh, and we will also tell you how to debug uh, the same if you are not able to get the output so more or less uh, these steps that you are going to follow in this uh, debugging of uh, the circuit uh, will be similar to what you are going to do in the uh, offline mode okay so on in the online mode this is the best that uh, we could do so today our focus will be on understanding ASP, ASK and implementing the same on uh, a digital platform and then next class we shall discuss uh, PSK and we will show uh, we will implement the same on uh, an online tool <coughs> and we will also show you the uh, recorded videos of uh, both the experiments okay so amplitude shift keying uh, as you all know is one of the digital modulation techniques where an amplitude is shifted with respect to the logic level uh, in accordance with the carrier okay so this is the uh, equation for ask when uh, symbol zero is uh, considered as the input we will send a zero voltage signal and symbol one is considered when symbol one is considered we will send carrier signal okay yeah so before i go to the circuit diagram and uh, equations i want you to just focus on the waveforms these uh, these are the waveforms that we have under ask m of t is the message signal which is a low frequency signal c of t is the high frequency carrier signal and this is the ASK output signal. So you can see here during logic one, whatever a C of T is present, that will appear across your ASK output during logic zero, during logic zero, whatever uh, is in the C of T signal will not appear across your ASK. So this can also be considered as on off keying because you are turning on uh, ASK output during logic one and you are turning off it during logic zero okay and so on and then uh, this is also referred to as ASK modulated output then finally you will have ASK demodulated output output the uh, frequency of demodulated output should match with the original message signal frequency isn't it this is what you have done in uh, ASK Oh, sorry am fm and pm even in your earlier semesters isn't it irrespective of whatever uh, modulation or demodulation scheme you consider the message signal frequency should match with the beam or demodulated signal frequency should match with the message signal frequency okay now i want all of you to pay attention and listen carefully now if this is the waveform that we want to implement how can i implement this what circuit should i use so that I can implement this. Now, all of you pay attention and uh, listen carefully. ASK output is obtained when input is logic one. When input is logic one, even though it is a, a square wave, can assume this as logic one and this as logic zero, right? So ASK output is obtained when input is logic one. You can see the same here in this diagram also. ASK output is obtained when logic 1 is given, we will have output and when logic 0 is given, we will not have any output. Now, if I have two inputs, one is the square wave, which is message signal and another is the high frequency carrier. These are the two inputs and if I need such a output, ASK output, wherein only for logic one, I should get output and for logic zero, I should not get output. How can I implement this? What circuit should I use so that I'll get this particular output? 
anyone i want to generate this ask output by using these two these two inputs tell me which is the simplest circuit that i can use to generate this ask output switching circuits okay applying carrier at drain in mosfet okay that's what prashant is saying okay sanat is saying diode okay any other answers so if you pay attention to the waveforms you'll see that the ask output is generated during logic 0 so it is on for logic 1 and for logic 0 it is off now you can use either a diode or you can also use what basically you want switching operation isn't it you want switching operation and for that we can use transistor because if i use diode diode will allow the flow of signals only during positive cycle but uh, in negative cycle it will not allow so that will not completely serve our purpose so what i'll do is i'll use transistor for implementing my switch now tell me how can i use transistor as a switch anyone can someone tell me what are the three operating regions of transistor what are the three operating regions of transistor okay saturation active okay so transistor has three regions one is the saturation region okay and another is active region okay i said three few of you have given me two okay uh, prashant has given me one more okay what about others i hope all of you have cleared basic electronics ac all those subjects okay thank you nana yeah huh. so we have three operating regions in a bipolar junction transistor that is bjt saturation region cut off region and uh, active region now tell me in saturation region uh, what is the behavior of transistor how does this behave what is the behavior observed during saturation region is the diode on off okay let us start with the easier one in cut off region tell me in cut off region tell me what is the status of the transistor in cut off region tell me what is the status of transistor off so that means it will act like a it will act like a off switch isn't it it will act like a off switch right that's correct then what will happen in the saturation region what will be the behavior of transistor in saturation region in saturation region in saturation region it will act like a on switch in saturation region it is behaving like a on switch okay what will happen in the active region what will happen in the active region anyone okay voltage source okay what are the two important applications of a transistor all of you might be preparing for a uh, lot of placement drives etc so tell me what are the two important applications of a transistor two typical applications it can be used either as a switch very good only prashant is giving me the answers what about others it can be used as a switch or it can be used as a amplifier isn't it so when a transistor is operated in active region it behaves like a amplifier it helps you in amplification right so that's about saturation region active region and cut off region right now what is our objective what is our focus here our focus is to implement ask and 
for implementing ASK, what should happen? Basically, switching operation should happen, isn't it? Switching should take place. That means, which are the two operating regions that we should operate on? Which are the two operating regions that we should focus on? Yes. So, when ASK is producing output, it should operate in saturation region. If it is not producing output, it should operate in cutoff region. Therefore, we will design transistor as a switch such that when logic 1 comes, it will operate in saturation region. And when logic 0 comes, it will operate in cutoff region. Okay, So, these are the two modes of operation. And based on appropriate currents given, base current given, we will be able to push the transistor to saturation region and cutoff region. Okay, so that is what is given in the uh, design equation. So assume some uh, collector current, say 0.4 milliampere, and a base current 0.9 milliampere, and saturation voltage of 0.3 volt. Right? This is one of the parameters or values of uh, collector current and a base current that we have considered to push transistor to saturation region. This is not the only condition or the values that we, have, we, we should use to push transistor to saturation region. There are multiple values. We have considered one of the values wherein we can push transistor to saturation region by maintaining IB at 0.9 milliampere and IC at 0.4 milliampere. You can also escalate this to 4 milliampere 9 milliampere or 3 volts or you can also uh, uh, decrease this to 0 0.04 milliampere, 0 0.09 milliampere or 0 0.03 volt. Okay, So this is one of the possible values we can consider to push transistor to saturation region, right? And we have considered some value of uh, uh, some amplitude for uh, carrier, say 2 volts and some value for uh, message signal 10 volts. So, uh, message signal since it has to propagate uh, over long distance and since we are focusing on amplitude modulation, we have kept it to be 5 times bigger than C of T. right? And by applying uh, KVL across uh, input loop and output loop, we shall get this equation. So, I hope we could uh, recall the equations of uh, KVL uh, that uh, you have used. Uh, if you apply KVL to the input side, this side, if you apply KVL to the input side, this is the equation you are going to get. So, M of uh, T is equal to VB uh, my, uh, by IB will be equal to RB. So, basically applying KVL to this particular input loop. And if you apply KVL to the output loop, you will get equation for RC. So, RC is equal to C of T minus VC sat by IC. Okay, so simple KCL equation is applied and we have extracted RC equation and RB equation and for the considered uh, C of T and M of T, we have got RC and RB values. Okay, So, this is uh, regarding modulation uh, part equations. Uh, coming to demodulation, in the demodulation our focus is by of uh, focus uh, shifts to envelope detection. So, I will take ASK output and I will use all of you pay attention and listen carefully. I'll use uh, a diode which basically acts like a envelope detector. So this is acting like an envelope detector. Then this RC, these RC values are acting like a low pass filter. And then I've used a amplifier which is a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 10. You can see uh, input is 1K and feedback is 10. So gain will be approximately or slightly greater than 10. Then comes comparator. So here this envelope detector will detect the envelope of the modulated signal and it is sent to low pass filter. The low pass filter which is constructed using RC will allow only low frequency signals to propagate. That means uh, capacitor will charge and discharge accordingly. The output of this low pass filter will be very small and it will be difficult for us to convert the same into a square waveform. So we have used an amplifier with a gain of a tad greater than 10, uh, 10 and then it is given to comparator which will compare the output of uh, amplifier with uh, V reference such that we have signal. 
okay so here we have used uh, relationship of uh, 1 by fc less than rc and y less than 1 by fm to get the value of uh, rc so one of the values should be assumed so say c is equal to 0.1 microfarad and uh, fc is uh, fixed and fm is fixed we will be able to compute r which is 10k so we shall use 10k pot to tune our circuit so that we are able to properly demodulate our circuit okay so any doubts in these equations again i am telling you telling you these are one of the values which will help us in pushing the transistor to saturation region okay so you can test it for yourself and you can use different set of values ultimately our focus is to demonstrate ask modulation and demodulation okay so we are not really worried too much about the uh, amplitudes uh, reduction or increase our focus is to demonstrate ask mod and demod okay so that's about uh, modulation and demodulation uh, calculations with respect to equations and this is the uh, circuit of modulator so basically transistor as a switch is used here we will be using uh, there is one small correction we will be using uh, pnp transistor right instead of npn transistor if we use npn transistor and take the output across the collector we will get inverted output so to avoid confusion we will be using pnp transistor okay so these are the values of rb and uh, rc we have got and uh, this is the demodulation circuit okay so this is our objective to get uh, ask and demodulated output waveforms okay so now for implementing this uh, let me use an online uh, simulator called uh, pulsed circuit so there i'll be uh, implementing this and i'll be showing you the output at each and every stage and uh, you can use this to uh, Uh, use this to debug even your hardware uh, circuit which you will be doing uh, after coming back to college okay so any doubts any doubts in the circuit that i have discussed so far so i'll be sharing the link also it is one of the easiest uh, uh, online tools that you can find so go here and go to circuits click on blank circuit uh, see what are the components i'll be needing i'll be needing the a, a transistor couple of uh, resistors and two sources and uh, output voltage and ground okay so let me add this so all of you pay attention to the procedure so for selecting components i'll just right click right click right click go to uh, active components transistor is an active component and select bipolar pnp or you can press p as a shortcut so if i press p so this is what i'm going to get then escape so I'll let me place this transistor here then i need two transistor two resistors so right click go add resistor so i'll add a resistor here and i'll add a resistor here and i'll add a wire also here right and a wire here for taking output then i need two sources isn't it for that i'll right click go to input inputs and sources select ac voltage source so i'll need a voltage source here and i'll need a voltage source here okay. so let me make the interconnections again right click add wire make the connection similarly make the connection here right and i need uh, ground also so right click uh, input and uh, inputs and sources add ground so i'll be adding ground here Uh, i can also have another ground here so make the interconnections and so we are done with our interconnections then give appropriate value so uh, c of t is 2 volt peak to peak and 2 kilohertz so right click here what i'll do is for the purpose of uh, showing demonstration i'll be giving 
frequency value 10 times lesser than what we have considered okay because if i give 2 kilohertz i'll be not be able to see the output properly okay i'll also show you why i have chosen to give 10 times less so instead of giving 2k what i'll do 2k is nothing but 2000 so instead of giving 2000 i'll give 200 right so right click peak to peak voltage is 2 volts i'll give 200 which is 10 times less than 2000 and instead of giving 10 volts peak to peak i'll give and instead of giving 500 hertz i'll give 50 hertz so right click on this edit give 10 volts and 50 hertz and what type of waveform is this square wave so duty cycle is 50 percent okay right and what about rc and rb values rb value is 10k so just right click on this edit 10k and this is 4.7k right click change this to 4.7k done so we have done all the interconnections now we shall try to visualize our output okay so any doubts so far any doubts so far anyone has any doubts see for implementing this we can use so many uh, online uh, tools or offline tools we did explore pspice multisim and all uh, but uh, then we thought that usage of uh, again computationally uh, challenging or large resource requirement tools may be difficult and uh, uh, the other alternative is this online tool which is freely available and uh, relatively easier to simulate and uh, this is only uh, as an add-on for you guys because anyways you have to come to college and you will be doing this hands-on so uh, you can use this online tool to verify the procedure that you, you are going to adapt okay so that is the reason why we have uh, gone for this tool if you are comfortable with some other tools you can also test the circuit on other uh, tools okay there are so many right so there is no restrictions as such our focus is to help you understand uh, how you are able to generate uh, waveforms and how you can debug if there are any errors okay so so this is about uh, modulation circuit now let us try to visualize the output so for typically tell me uh, which are the uh, waveforms that you will be visualizing in CRO please comment in the chat box after rigging this particular circuit if I ask you to visualize the output which are the waveforms you will be visualizing in your CRO which are the waveforms you will be visualizing so you will need C of T you will need M of T and you will need output or ASK output very good Prashant Sanat okay. so I will just right click on this uh, right click on this view in scope so this has come here view in scope here by default we will be getting current and voltage so what I will do is I will right click on this I will right click on this go to properties here you can see it is showing voltage and current so let me deselect current let me select show frequency and show duty cycle because i can use this as a reference to compare with my demodulated signal output so show frequency and show duty cycle and show voltage and show peak value okay so now you can see this signal frequency is 50 hertz and its duty cycle is uh, 50 percent okay so that's about message signal now right click on this click on view in scope again you will be getting both current and voltage so right click and go to properties select or deselect show current okay and we will not click on show frequency here because our focus is on uh, message signal and demodulated signal okay if you want you can also visualize the duty cycle and frequency of your carrier also right then we have to visualize our output right click on this this is a wire then click on view in scope so view in scope again go to properties deselect show current and this is your output are you getting uh, are you getting the desired ask output 
are we getting the desired ask output this is m of t c of t and this is ask so just pay attention to the positive cycle of a square wave and ask so during the occurrence of positive cycle you'll get ask output and during negative that is logic zero ask output is uh, missing okay so this verifies this verifies that we are able to generate ask output okay now in case in the lab if you are not able to get this output the chances are number one you have uh, done wrong interconnection or you would have uh, interconnect interchanged uh, emitter and uh, collector or you would have uh, or you would have uh, uh, what used a wrong transistor or your transistor may not be working properly okay so these are the possibilities that you may encounter or you probably would have given wrong value here and uh, that is the reason why you are not getting the output okay now i i told you that why i have uh, opted for uh, i told you that i'll tell you why i have opted for 250 instead of uh, uh, showing you 2500 uh, frequency waveforms if we use 200 2050 sorry 500 frequency here see since the scopes are small we will not be able to visualize the output properly i hope you are able to understand this see there i have increased the frequency to 2k and uh, this frequency to uh, 500 hertz we will not be able to properly see the output see there they are very very closer to each other that is the reason why i have scaled this down to 250 correspondingly is this clear so that's about ask output so we have verified ask output you can also do the same in your uh, computer or laptop and you can verify your output okay so this is about the uh, modulation next is we have to rig up demodulator circuit so what are the components i'll be needing i'll need, need a transistor uh, a pot a capacitor and op amp as a amplifier and op amp as a comparator and some v reference so i'll come here let me just zoom out let me uh, just push this slightly to the other side so that i can have space for demodulator circuit so let me push this to the this entire thing to the left hand side here now right click go to uh, active components select diode so i'll select diode here i'll place it here so let me just delete this uh, wire because i can directly place transistor uh, diode here so active components diode output is given to diode then from that you will uh, connect pot so passive components click on add potentiometer potentiometer then escape right click go to passive components add capacitor right then right click go to active components here uh, sorry active building blocks here select add op amp real add op amp Go to active right click go to active building blocks add op amp okay so let me just zoom in so that yeah if you are not able to see it properly please comment in the chat box i'll just zoom in so right click go to add active building blocks add op amp real so it will come here op amp you can adjust the size of, of this op amp also okay, this is the minimum right so and our pump okay 
Okay, so let me just uh, flip this. Edit. Yeah, so we'll uh, use seven four one. So let me use this here. this once again to box So I'll place it here. Then internally plus VCC and minus VCC will be given, right? Then what are the other connections I should make from the uh, capac capacitor? It uh, wire goes to inverting, non-inverting pin, and then from inverting pin you have one K uh, resistor and ten K resistor goes as the feedback. Okay, so this is plus. So let me add wire and make this interconnection. Then you will need a couple of resistors. So this is one resistor. You also need another resistor which goes from this junction to pin number six. This is pin number six. So let me draw a small wire, right? And then I'll use a resistor then make the interconnection okay then this junction of uh, 1k and 10k is done here but the other point of 1k goes to ground so this portion goes to ground so what i'll do is i'll uh, use a small uh, ground point and i'll connect ground here So feedback resistor value is 10K. So let me change this to 10K, right? Then after this, I will be needing one more comparator. So copy paste. Let me just move this to the left hand side. Okay. Now, output of this uh, amplifier goes to pin number three. So, this is pin number three. So let me take a wire and make connections from pin number three to here. And then from pin number two, you have V reference. So let me draw a wire. Let me draw a wire. And for this, I have to connect uh, V reference here. So right click. Go to inputs and sources and select here add voltage source one terminal add voltage source one terminal and connect it here okay now five volts is connected here we will see uh, how to uh, tune this okay so as we go on so let me just make this right 
okay yeah and now this is my final output here then i should also ground these two points so let me use a wire and ground these two points and then i can give this to common ground which is uh, below and then the values of uh, resistor and capacitor is 10k port and 0.1 microfarad if you use uh, 0.1 microfarad uh, practically you will get but in simulation you will not get correct charging and discharging so i'll be using one microfarad capacitor one microfarad again our focus here is to understand output at each stage and uh, also understand how to debug the same okay. so more or less this will help you in understanding how to debug this circuit even in the offline mode the steps involved in debugging okay. then this uh, will be connected to the common ground right so we have done all the interconnections now let us see whether we are able to get output at each stage okay so first So right click, change the value to 10K, this is 1K, okay. Now, let me look at the value at the output of my ASK. So click on view, scope. And since I've used uh, envelope detector, so it is only allowing low frequency uh, sorry envelope envelope is uh, detected and it is transmitting and here uh, this is the output of uh, capacitor and resistor junction which is the low pass filter so click on view in scope sort of uh, mistake just one second given this so let me see the output at this stage i'm getting one bad connection okay. okay i think uh, there is some there was some disconnection here yeah 
yes yes yeah so how it is done let me just remove this remove this remove this remove this okay so let me just quickly recap what we have uh, done so this is the output of ask output of ask so since transistor is used only during logic one we are getting the output i hope it is clear till here then i'm using envelope detector followed by low pass filter and this is the output of low pass filter you can see capacitor charging and discharging isn't it i hope it is visible yes but if you look at the output of this low pass filter say here at this point you have envelope envelope detector implemented using diode by127 then rc which acts like a passive low pass filter at the output of low pass filter if you look at the voltage level it is in millivolts in simulation you are getting somewhere around 550 millivolts in the uh, practical scenario you will be getting this somewhere around 200 or 300 millivolts but excuse me sir yes this is not a low pass filter i think this is a rectifier circuit with a filter circuit yeah that's what what is this filter doing now uh, this filter is doing a uh, smoothing the waveform rectified waveform yes it is smoothing the rectified waveform and it is also ensuring that only the envelope frequencies are allowed the it will it will not allow the i frequency content of the uh, carrier okay so i'll show you the final output then you can reconnect okay so this is the charging and discharge discharging part now as i've uh, told you the amplitude level is very less so for us to take a decision by comparing this with the comparator will be difficult okay so what i'll do is i'll uh, use a transistor with uh, a gain of uh, 10k so this is a non inverting uh, amplifier uh, amplifier so i had uh, deleted it let me just copy paste this so now this is the this is the non inverting amplifier right now if i look at the output of this non inverting amplifier right click view in scope something is missing sir so, we did and vss no this will internally take the values once again uh, what i'll do is i'll uh, use op amp from an existing one and being okay go to op amps okay inverting amplifier okay let, let me take this i think i had taken uh, an op amp which was having vcc and all this is what i should have taken okay so this has internal values attached yeah okay let me just delete these things yeah don't worry i'll repeat the procedure so there is no need to it worried about this okay yeah so connect this to wire okay. now uh, let me recap what i have been uh, telling you this is the message signal this is the carrier signal and here we were getting ask output now we have used an envelope detector and a low pass filter implemented a passive low pass filter you can also refer this as a smoothing capacitor which basically allows low frequency signals as extracted by this envelope detector then output of this is given to amplifier because the output of this uh, low pass filter is very small thus it is difficult for us to uh, 
compare this with the comparator and take appropriate decision so what i'll do is i'll use a non inverting amplifier with a gain of uh, around 10 uh, value because i've used gain uh, resistor as 10 right i hope you do remember the formula of non inverting amplifier gain it is uh, uh, 1 plus uh, rf by ri into uh, vi so that is the gain formula now if i click at the output of this amplifier this is what i am uh, able to see i think here it is going mr correct happening okay, did i delete something i think i had uh, deleted this part कनेक्शन <laughs> fine now it is sorted out so 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 take one terminal okay let me start this with say zero <coughs> so let me quickly recap what i've uh, told you so so this is the output of uh, ask now everything is ready now this is the output of uh, ask 
that we have got have uh, given this to the envelope detector followed by passive low pass filter so at the output of my passive low pass filter let me just remove this at the output of my passive low pass filter my capacitor is charging and discharging and the maximum peak uh, voltage that i'm getting is somewhere around 550 millivolt now with this amplitude it is difficult for me to compare the amplitude levels and assign logic 0 and logic 1 in the comparator so what i'll do is i'll use a non inverting amplifier with a gain of 10 how do you say it is gain its gain is 10 i've used feedback resistor as 10k and input resistor as 1k so it is basically acting as a non inverting amplifier so if you just click on its output here right click view in scope you will see it is basically amplifying the same okay so almost uh, greater than 10 times so this is the output of your inverting amplifier uh, sorry non inverting amplifier so let me just remove this this is the output now i'll give this to capacitor uh, comparator and i should uh, regenerate back my demodulated signal now for that i have to give appropriate threshold value in my uh comparator so here this is my v reference i should give appropriate threshold value such that i'll be able to recover back my uh, message signal so how do i give my threshold value i'll look at the i'll look at the capacitor charging and discharging say for example so if this is charging and discharging charging and discharging what i'll do is i will consider this as the threshold i'll consider this as the threshold so anything yeah here yeah anything above this i'll assign logic 1 and anything below this i'll assign logic 0 okay let me repeat this because you will be basically tuning this in the lab okay but since we are in online mode there there is no tuning so this is the capacitor charging and uh, discharging charging and discharging so here i'll draw a threshold like this and this is these signals are above threshold isn't it so anything above this threshold this threshold say lambda will be assigned with logic 1 and anything below this threshold will be assigned with logic 0 okay now again uh, how will you decide the value in the lab basically you will be using a variable uh, voltage but in the uh, online mode what we have to do is we have to guess what might be the value okay or we can also use variable uh, uh, volt volt meter Okay, so here the maximum peak I'm getting is six point one two. So here I believe uh, it is almost fifty uh, percent of the maximum peak value. So let me give V reference as say three volts. Before that, let us see what is the output that we are getting uh, through this uh, comparator, so that you'll be able to understand uh, what is the effect of varying V reference. so output of my comparator is now a straight line because it is assuming uh, it is comparing the voltage received with zero so obviously it is greater than zero so it is giving logic 1 in its entire duration now let me change this to this reference value v reference to say 3 volts if i change this to 3 volts you can see it is turning on and off but still the on period and off period is not matching right so here we should ensure that the duty cycle as well as the frequency of my demodulated output is almost same so for that what i'll do is i'll read uh, right click on this uh, scope go to properties and i'll click on show frequency and show duty cycle show frequency and show duty cycle and press okay now you can see its frequency is 50% uh, sorry 50 hertz but duty cycle is 65 66% so t on is more and t off is less so let me increase this uh, v reference to say 3.3 3. 
if i increase this v reference to 3.3 look at the effect the duty cycle is now around how much 60% frequency is 50% duty cycle is 61% so let me increase this further to say 3.5 if i increase this uh, to 3.5 the duty cycle has increased uh, as uh, decreased to 57 so i can further increase this, this to say 3.7 but i should ensure that the shape of my waveform does not alter see here when i increase v reference to 3.7 my shape of my waveform is altered i hope you are able to see this see there the shape of waveform is altered here so that should not happen so let me reduce this to say 3.6 if i reduce this to 3.6 we are getting 50 hertz and duty cycle is 55% so this is acceptable okay so this is what you will be doing in the lab also the first step in uh, that you will be doing in lab is zoom out you can also tune your resistor to adjust duty cycle okay 50 55% is acceptable okay so all of you just uh, pay attention and uh, listen carefully in the lab also this is what you'll be doing typically first you'll rig up the modulation circuit and you'll visualize the uh, modulated waveform if you are not able to get modulated waveform then there are two possibilities either transistor is not working or your connection is wrong if you are able to get modulated output then you'll rig up your demodulation circuit again in the demodulation circuit first you should rig up this envelope detector and low pass filter and see whether you are able to get this charging and discharging so let me just recap what you are supposed to get so here you are supposed to get ask waveform like this ask waveform like this once you confirm that you are able to get ask waveform then make the connections and here don't do this connection look at the output after this uh, capacitor so click view in scope you should be able to see capacitor charging and discharging waveform like this if you don't get such a waveform if you get a flat line or if you are getting lot of distor uh, distortion then something is wrong with your demodulator circuit particularly in these two sections if you are able to get this then you can go for interconnecting your non inverting amplifier which will basically increase the amplitude right and then here uh, the uh, amplitude was around 550 millivolt here its amplitude is somewhere around 6.125 uh, volt right once you get this then you connect this to comparator and vary this voltage start from 0 volt and slightly uh, increase at some point at some point and you have to parallelly monitor your output here across the uh, comparator output so at some point at some point you should also monitor its uh, frequency and duty cycle at some point you will be able to get a uh, correct frequency and duty cycle also will be somewhere around 50% right it will not be exactly 50% because there will be deviation uh, but okay 5 5 to 10% deviation is acceptable right then note down the waveforms and uh, its duty cycle and frequency okay and here the saturation voltages that we have uh, kept in the transistor uh, in the op amp is plus or minus 50 volts that is the reason why we are getting 15 volts here if you reduce the saturation voltages here see here it will reduce to maximum 12 okay so it all depends on uh, what is the v ref uh, plus vcc and minus vcc that you are connecting but as i've already told you our focus is on the frequency look at the message signal frequency it is 50 here even here it is 50 i can also in uh, vary this so instead of keeping 50 let me make this 40 correspondingly there should be change in the output here if you are not getting output what you should do is you should tune this
here negate it at 4 So you have to tune it and you should be able to get your desired frequency. Okay. Did not change. Huh? Okay, I did not change frequency, I've changed uh, beauty cycle. 40, what was the value here? I think 3.6. So you can see the values here, it is displayed. It is 40 Hertz, input is 40 Hertz, 50% duty cycle, and output is 40 Hertz, and duty cycle is 44%. Uh, you can slightly uh, tune this to make 50% uh, duty cycle if possible. Right, it has increased to 46. If you further tune this, it will become almost uh, 50%. 5 to 10 uh, percent deviation is acceptable, but frequency is one of the most important components for us. Okay, so that's about ASK circuit diagram. Uh, coming to why I've opted for this online simulator, yes, there are so many options, including uh, Simulink. The reason why why I have opted for this uh, online simulator is because this is one platform wherein you'll get a lot of standard circuits. For example, if you just click on circuits, you'll go to op amps and here you'll see inverting, non-inverting. These are all standard circuits that are already there. All you have to do is edit and modify. So you can understand the standard circuits and you can modify these standard circuits and you will uh, be able to analyze what is the corresponding effect of a uh, modification. So you will get a collection of so many circuits including uh, the transmission lines that I have uh, shown you for uh, understanding transmission line, uh, standing waves and reflection all those stuff. So you will get a lot of uh, uh, standard circuits here. So that is the reason why. And uh, 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 since it is online simulator, there is no need to download anything. So it is already available. All you have to do is edit it and test it for yourself. Okay. Again, I'm repeating, there is no compulsion that you have to test in this online tool itself. If you are comfortable with any of the electronic tools, you can uh, rig up the circuit and verify whether you are able to get this particular waveform. Okay. So ultimately your mod and demod outputs should match. Okay. Any doubts? Any doubts here? So typically this is what you'll be doing in lab also. Each and every stage, uh, whatever outputs have shown, you'll be testing it and visualizing the same uh, on a CRO. Okay, so instead of CRO, you'll be seeing uh, this in the scope online. Any doubts? Any doubts here? Any doubts here? If you change your frequency correspondingly, that should reflect in the D mode also. So I've changed this frequency to 30 hertz. Uh, here uh, it is not 30 hertz, so you have to tune your uh, V reference. If you tune your V reference, properly step by step you'll be able to so get the output or instead of using this uh, fixed value you can use go to input sources and you can select what is that something called uh, variable voltage source uh, add variable voltage add variable voltage and here you'll be able to vary this and you'll be able to appropriately fix your output. So you're getting 
more so you change this and you'll be able to get your desired output okay any doubts so any doubts in the circuit simulation say yes or no no doubts okay so i recommend all of you to please uh, go through uh, ask circuit diagram and please do test this circuit in any of the uh, online uh, simulators or offline simulators you may have okay uh, it is left to your choice but we want you to understand the working of this circuit diagram that is our ultimate goal because offline you will be coming and you will be implementing this uh, and so on uh, if you something goes wrong you should be able to uh, debug uh, the same okay so you can test this uh, using any simulators and you can verify and understand okay. so if there are no doubts that's it in today's session in the next session we shall uh, discuss fsk and we will also show you the recorded video of the output uh, that uh, you will be obtaining in the class okay any doubts any doubts it's shiv sagar prashant Uh, simulink i think shiv sagar prashant have you guys uh, done this in simulink anyone has done circuit simulation in simulink can you unmute unmute yourself anyone who has done simulation in simulink circuit simulation okay yes, sir mari uh, dibi so how do you feel the complexity the ease of uh, rigging circuit in simulink compared to this tool ಸರ್ ಪ್ರತಿ ಸತಿ ಸ್ಕೋಪ್ ಓಪನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ನೋಡಬೇಕಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಸರ್ ಅದು ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಈಜಿ ಇದೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ನೋಡಬೇಕು ಒಂದೇ ಸತಿ ನೋಡಬಹುದು ಮಾಡಕ್ಕೆ ರಿಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ಕೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಯಾವುದು ಈಜಿ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಇದೇ ಈಜಿ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲೂ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ದಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಆನ್ಲೈನ್ ಟೂಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಸರ್ಕ್ಯೂಟ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅವೇಲೇಬಲ್ ಸೋ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮಾಡಿಫೈ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಓಕೆ ಓಕೆ ಸೋ ಇಫ್ देयर ಆರ್ ನೋ ಡೌಟ್ಸ್ ಸೋ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಸೆಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಷನ್ we shall discuss fsk and we will also show you the recorded videos of esk and fsk outputs okay um, before i let you go as i've already told you many times please use any of the online simulators or offline simulators and rig this circuit and verify the outputs you will not get too much time uh, in the month of november or december and uh, you may not be able to practice each and everything at least if you do online simulation you will be able to understand uh, the uh, working of the circuit and you'll be capable of debugging even offline okay yeah that's it we'll uh, meet next week okay thank you